Hey, what's up? This is Ben from Wad Prep, and I am here to help you get your best score possible on CrossFit Open 20.3. I have good news and I have bad news. Good news is a lot of you have probably already done this workout or you've been exposed to this workout before. The bad news is that this workout is going to absolutely crush you or it's going to crush most people who do it. Uh, before we get going, I do want to say a lot of this footage is pulled from our previous episode where we taught you step by step how to get your best open score possible on CrossFit 18.4. But I do have a couple special additions to this video, including a special cameo appearance by Dave Castro himself. You'll have to wait and see that. But before we get going and before we dig into the nitty gritty of this movement, I do wanna say that Wad Prep is not associated with CrossFit HQ in any way, shape or form. But if you are a CrossFit Masters athlete specifically, stick around to the end of the video. We have an incredible program here at Wad Prep that we have released specifically to help Masters athletes get to the next level and beyond in their training. And we've developed a really great community. And then one more thing that I wanna mention is that if you haven't done it yet, make sure you go to wadprep.com to sign up for our complete free strategy guide. So every Friday morning, not only do we send out the link to this video, but we send out links to all the other tips and tricks that we compile, including our recovery video that I make with a friend of mine. And if you want to get all that, you have to be signed up for the strategy guides. It's completely free. Just go to wadprep.com and you can sign up for it. Overall, many, many people should scale this workout. In weeks past, I've talked about everyone should do RX, everyone should try it RX. This is one of the few workouts where I'm gonna caution people to try it RX if they're not ready. I think that you should scale this workout if the deadlifts are approaching or over your one rep max, if you have any pre-existing back injuries or back pain, and if you have any pre-existing neck injuries or neck pain. With all the deadlifts and handstand push-ups, there's gonna be a lot of pressure on the neck and the lower back, and I don't want anyone to get injured in this workout. So don't try to be a hero, be smart. If you think you need to scale this workout, it's totally fine to do that. Another thing I wanna mention, I did predict that handstand walks would be showing up in this year's Open. I predicted it for like three years though, but not many people need to worry about it. So if you're freaking out about the handstand walks, Please realize you have to get through Diane in a decent time, plus be able to pull 21 heavy deadlifts. If you can't do that, you're not gonna have to worry about the handstand walks. So that's why we're gonna save the handstand walk tips all the way for the end of this video. And one more tip before we move into the individual movements. If you think that you can make it through the first part of the workout, which is Diane, if you think you can make it through that, I really suggest not sprinting. So if you hit Diane at about 85 to 90%, that's gonna give you a little bit more gas in the tank so that you're able to pull those heavy deadlifts and hopefully hit some handstand walks. If you try sprinting through Diane and get a great score on Diane, it really doesn't matter if you can't even pull the deadlift because someone can do Diane a lot slower than you and then just get one deadlift or a few more deadlifts than you and they automatically beat your score. So remember, it's not about Diane specifically, but if you can get through it, make sure that you have enough energy to at least knock out a few of those deadlifts. In this video, we're gonna be covering scaled RX and masters, so please bear with me. I'm gonna break it down movement by movement and we are starting off with the deadlifts. The first thing I wanna say about the deadlifts is that if this is a heavy-ish weight for you, singles are perfectly fine. In this video, you're gonna see me doing singles and I want you to notice how quickly I'm able to accumulate reps. And what's cool is that this is about 70% of the work that it would require if you were doing unbroken sets. So basically I'm picking the bar up and then instead of having to lower it all the way down to the ground, I'm able to drop from the top. It's not sexy, it's not fancy, but it is effective. So if the deadlifts are heavy, I will suggest doing small sets or even dropping down to singles earlier on in the workout. If you are doing singles or even sets, make sure that when you finish the last rep, whether it's a single or a bigger set, drop the bar from the top. Do not be one of those people that stand up and then they set the bar back down gracefully. Sure, you might get bonus points in a powerlifting gym, but you're not gonna get bonus points in the CrossFit Open. So at the top, lock out and then just drop the bar. That way you don't have to deal with all of that negative energy as you lower the bar down to the ground. Another thing for the deadlifts, I'm really gonna suggest negative splits. So what that means is that you start with a bigger set and with a smaller set. So for the set of 21, you could do eight, seven, six. That adds up to 21. For the set of 15, you could do 10, three, two, if you really wanted to. 
That's really just a personal preference of mine. I just like starting with bigger sets and then slowly able to drop off the reps. Another tip for the deadlifts is use a staggered grip. So for whatever reason, I see a lot of people wanting to deadlift with a double overhand grip. I really suggest having one hand underhand and one hand overhand. Sure, it's not like you're clean and you're not gonna necessarily improve your hook grip strength, but an under and over grip, I call it a staggered grip, for me is way, way, way stronger. So if you've never tried it, I do encourage you to try pulling with a staggered grip. If that's something you don't like, if you'd rather hook grip, or if you'd rather just do a double overhand grip, more power to you. But I just suggest if you've never tried it, try doing a staggered grip and you obviously can do it either way. Last thing for the deadlifts, make sure you wear a belt. Belts will definitely help you move the weight more quickly and more efficiently. It's gonna help control your core and give you more stability. So I am definitely going to be wearing a belt for this workout, although I don't always do it. I am suggesting you wear a belt for this one. Okay, so far in this video, we've talked about the deadlifts. There's one final point that I failed to make back in 2018 that we must address right now. And that is, please, at all costs, avoid what I'm calling the Dave Castro deadlift. I love Dave Castro. Dave, if you watch this video or if someone tags you in this video, just know that I love what you've done for the sport. Um, I miss you and I love you. But this is a great video and it's on the internet, so it's fair game. Whatever you do when you're doing this workout, if the deadlifts get heavy, please, please, please do not do a Dave Castro deadlift. Let's move on to the handstand push-ups. So make sure you go to games.crossfit.com to get the full standards to make sure you're doing this right. My first point is you have to practice before the workout to make sure that you can hit your reps consistently. I know there's gonna be people, there were people last year and the year before, they get their measurement, they do like one or two reps and they're like, yeah, I'm good. And then it's no rep, no rep, no rep, no rep as they go through the workout. So really focus on making sure you understand what gets your heels above that freaking line. That moves me on to my next point. Make sure the whole workout, the whole time you're doing handstand pushups, all you're thinking is heels up, heels up, heels up. If you don't think about driving your heels up, you will get no reps. Because even if you just relax your ankles a little bit and you relax your feet a little bit, what's gonna happen is as your feet slide up the wall, your heel's gonna stick, your toe's gonna point up, and you will not have your heel above that line. Another thing that goes along with these new standards is your hand width really matters. If you naturally have a really wide stance with your hands, then you might actually not be able to get your heels above the line. As you can see here, I was kind of just messing around, moving my hands really wide and then really narrow. The narrower you move your hands, the higher your heels will be able to get because obviously you can reach higher here than here but you have to find that sweet spot. So I would just encourage you in practice before the workouts, find a good spot for your hands and try to stick with that. You can even mark it on the ground if you need to, or if you're using plates like I was, just know what part of the plate you need to put your hands. One thing we need to talk about with regard to these standards is you have to start with your heels above the line. Scott Panchi got no rep for it. I've seen so many people get no reps and I've also seen a lot of bro reps here. When you start, your heels have to be above the line. So when you kick up to the wall, you need to be thinking heels up and make sure your judge tells you you are okay to start. If you don't do that, you could potentially do an entire rep that doesn't count because you didn't start with your heels above the line. So I could go on for days about handstand pushups, but we already have a ton of free videos here on YouTube and on Facebook that will help you get better. So click the floaty link here if you are on YouTube. If you click that link, it's gonna take you to a playlist where you'll be able to watch all of our handstand push-up training videos. Go watch those after you watch this, of course, and it's gonna help you improve your performance for 18.4, and we'll also be sending links to this in our complete strategy guide. So let's talk about the scaled and the master's division really quick, and then we will wrap up with handstand walks at the end. So for the scaled division, we're doing hand release push-ups and bear crawls. For the hand release push-ups, it's really important to make sure 
that you're not getting no rep or bro rep here. It's very easy to snake the push-ups. That's where your chest rises well before your hips do. You don't wanna do that. It's definitely a no rep and it looks super lame. So if that's something you struggle with, I want you to internalize starting with your butt first. So even when I'm doing hand release push-ups, I have a tendency to wanna to snake my way up or, or keep my butt sagging down. In order to keep that good plank position, what I started doing was thinking about butt first. So when I release my hands and I go to press, I think about someone's pulling my butt up on a string as I'm pressing up. And just that simple cue of, of butt first and making sure that my hips are rising with my shoulders, just thinking about that for every single rep prevents me from doing a snake. And then this is probably the most important part of hand release push-ups. And again, check the standards. I didn't triple check this, but I'm pretty sure it's okay. Make sure you rest at the bottom of your rep, not the top. So there's no time limit for how long you rest on the ground after releasing your hands. So as you can see here, this is me doing a rep. I take my hands off and I'm actually sitting down at the bottom for a little bit and then boom, I lock out and finish the rep. That is so much more efficient and you're gonna be a lot less fatigued compared to doing your hand release, doing the push up, and then resting in the front lean and rest position. You do not want to be resting there. You wanna be resting on the ground. And the last tip, and I will caveat this, I usually no rep this when I'm coaching athletes, but when I check the standards, it does seem like it's okay. So if you release your feet with your hands, I think the rep will get easier. So we can call this maybe a, a kipping hand release push up or just a hand and foot release push up, whatever you want to call it. All I know is that for me personally, and a lot of athletes will naturally do this, if you lift your feet up while you lift your hands up and then you smack them both down on the ground at the same time, you kind of get almost like a kipping effect where you're snapping from an arch position to a hollow position and it's gonna help you shoot up and finish those reps a little bit more efficiently. So again, check the standards, make sure your coaches and your judges are totally fine with it. But if it is legal, then doing a foot release potentially can help you rack up more reps more quickly. Let's touch on the bear crawl. I tested these a little bit and I found one major thing Actually, two major things that I wanna talk about. Number one, don't be an idiot with your hands. Make sure you start with your hands behind the line. A lot of people are gonna be exhausted by the time they get there. They're gonna put their hands down. If your hands are across the line at all, it's technically a no rep and you're gonna to have to start again. So just don't make that mistake. Make sure your judge tells you it's okay. Suggestion number two is to have wide feet. So when I was practicing these a little bit earlier today, whenever I kept my feet narrow, it seemed a lot more fatiguing and a lot slower and a lot harder. But when I spread my feet really wide, like as you'll see in this video, it allowed me to move a lot faster and I didn't feel fatigued at all. It stayed with the standards. My butt was always higher than my head and I was able to move a lot more quickly. I kind of kept my legs straight too. I didn't have to bend them and it felt like my steps were farther. So just play around with it, see what works for you. But I would suggest having wide feet as you bear crawl. So for those of you doing the 55 plus masters division, you have push press. I'm sure you know how to do push press if you're hitting it RX at the age of 55 plus. But one thing I wanna say with the push press is to make sure that you do touch and go. So as you can see in this video, it's really important that when the weight hits your shoulders, you should spring right back up into the next rep. There's no use doing this where you let the bar come down, you have to totally reset and then do the next rep. So just do touch and go, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. You'll be able to rack up reps quicker and also remember to breathe. So last but not least, let's talk about the handstand walks. The number one thing here is don't do a hand fault. A lot of people tend to do these running start things where they put their hand down and it crosses the line. Don't do that because it's a no rep here. So be really cautious where you put your hands down make sure that you're smart about that because if you are racking up handstand walks, the last thing you wanna do is have to come back to the beginning and restart. The next thing I wanna say is we do have tons of videos about handstand walks. So I really suggest clicking the floaty link here if you're on YouTube or just going to YouTube and typing in wad prep handstand walk. You should find our playlist and our playlist has tons of videos teaching you all the different intricacies about how to handstand walk more efficiently. So if you want a crash course on handstand walking, make sure you check out our videos and you will definitely improve.
So I hope that you like this new and improved version of CrossFit Open 20.3. This is the full strategy guide, but we do have more strategies and updates throughout the weekend that we want to send you. Make sure you go to wadprep.com and sign up for these strategy guides. You will get consistent updates when we come up with new strategies, when we release new videos. Like for this video, recovery will be huge, and we will be releasing a recovery video, the ultimate recovery wad to help that lower back recover from this workout. If you want that, it's completely free, but you have to go to wadprep.com and sign up for our strategy guides. The next thing I wanna talk, if you are above the age of 35, so 35 years or older, and you love CrossFit, then I have a special, special place for you. It's called Wad Prep Plus. It is a community of CrossFit Masters athletes that I'm connecting directly with the Wad Prep coaching team. So if you're someone who wants strategies on every single open workout, if you want customized advice on how to get better at things like double unders and toes to bar and handstand pushups, if you want someone on the Wad Prep team to personally review your videos, then you need to check out Wad Prep Plus. It is an incredible deal right now during the open, and you can click the link in the description below or in the top comment. If you're here on YouTube, the top comment below, I pinned it there for you. Last but not least, I did this in 2018 and I wanna do it again. In the comments below, I want you to tell me what is your profession and what is your age? And then let's add one more thing. What is your absolute favorite movement in all of CrossFit? If you say deadlifts or handstand pushups, guess what? You're probably gonna do great in this workout, but if you don't, that's fine. So what is your age, profession, and what is your favorite CrossFit movement? Leave a comment below, and then I will see you next week. Oh yeah, can't forget, thumbs up if you like the video, thumbs down if you don't, don't forget to hit the subscribe button.